Welcome to our 31st episode of The World of Running by Geeks on Feet. I'm your host Aditi Pandya. Our first podcast episode was aired on 30th September 2020. Since then, we did something right. We got a lot of feedback and with every feedback, we improved our content. This is a first YouTube channel edition. So going forward, you will not only be able to listen to our podcast wherever you are listening but also view them some of the videos that we'll be playing in the youtube channel will also be available in our show notes for those listening in the audio at run mechanics we analyzed more than 200 runners and almost 95% of them had weak hips This podcast is sponsored by Go Athlos. What does it take to build functional yet beautiful running gear for Indian conditions? This quest and love for all things outdoors and running led to the launch of Athlos in 2015. Athlos founders Shruti and Praveen, both are runners and outdoor lovers themselves, set out to solve this with one fabric and product, the bamboo tee. Soon enough the Athlos tees sold out and along came some more orders and then came a stream of feedback and other challenges that runners faced The Athlos running collection today features shorts and t-shirts made from sustainable and high quality fabrics like Econel, Eucalyptus and Merino wool The Athlos running gear has traveled the world with runners donning in races like Ladakh Marathon Malnad Ultra, Comrades Marathon, Ultraman Australia, etc. And I, being a runner myself and also a user of Athlos, can vouch that their t-shirts are one to go for. So what does a good hip mechanics mean? We'll be discussing in today's episode. Before we go any further in today's episode I have a request for all our listeners it takes a lot of work to come up with a topic research the content record with our guest and post production if you know of someone who's getting into running please share our podcast link with them and do rate us wherever you are listening also do like share subscribe to our youtube channel today we have no guest for our episode arvind has been part of the world of running since its inception and he's also the co-founder of geeks on feet and run mechanic he's also a certified gait analyst and he was part of episode 4 the importance of running form so welcome arvind once again Thank you so much Aditi and um, it really feels good to be in front of the audience again. So Arvind at Run Mechanics we we meet a lot of runners right and uh, runners interchangeably talk about say glutes hips um pelvic rotation so before we dive down into the deeper aspects I want to I want you to explain what does it mean by hips and why is it so important a very good question um i would say it's all in the hips <laughs> because you know if hips are not good you can immediately uh, find a runner whether they are a good runner or bad runner right so immaterial of the speed distance and so on and so forth weak hips are always visible now coming to your question what are hips uh, there are three important things that uh, runners needs to know one the hips which have the glute muscles glute muscles are the the largest muscles that um, you know all of us uh, use when we run uh, that is one part of the main major part of the hip complex and second part of the hip which is equally important is um, the pelvic region right the pelvic joint uh, that includes multiple bones and uh, multiple ligaments which makes up the pelvic joint and that is the joint which connects the hip the upper body as well as the lower body right so that is another important part of the hip and the third which is also very important uh, is the hip flexors the front part of the hip which allows us to bend the hips right 
So these are the three major parts when we say in the context of runners, in the context of this discussion, say hips, these are the ones. Yeah. Sure. So what role does a hip play, Arvind? So when I talk about role, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm trying to understand in terms of, say, power generation or energy transfer, stability. Right. See, all the runners, if you see, there are um, two or three major objectives we have, right? How do we run faster? How do we run longer? And then the third is not an objective, but something that we want to prevent. How do we prevent injuries, right? So these are the three things. Now, hips are the fundamental part of, you know, achieving all these three, right? So being faster, running longer, and of course, preventing injuries. Now, what role does they play? Um, so we all heard of um, center of gravity, right? So any object, if it has to be stable, the center of gravity has to be in such a way that the base and the center of gravity has to match. Otherwise, the object will fall off. That is how it is, right? So, uh, and amazingly, humans, we stand on just two legs. There's a small part of contact, you know, if you look at volume of the body to how much part of the, how much part of the body actually touches the ground, just the two feet. Now, if we have to be uh, very efficient at our movement, we need to ensure that our center of gravity is very well managed. And uh, that is part of what we call athleticism, right? What athletes are good at, they're able to dynamically change their orientation so that the center of gravity is such that they're able to do what they're doing, right? So a, a long jumper or a, a javelin thrower or a pole water or a hockey player, right? Or a skater. All of them, what they're doing, they're essentially balancing themselves, stabilizing themselves such that their center of gravity is allowing them to do all those movements, right? So, and runners, it is equally important that we manage the center of gravity. So, hip being the center of the body is also a center of gravity, right? So, that is the one important part the hip plays in, in our running, right? So, essentially, if we are able to manage the center of gravity well, that means we are a better runner, we are more efficient runner. Now, the second part is running faster mean and running longer mean we generate more force. And uh, the glute muscles that we talked about, which are part of the hip complex, actually play that role of force production, right? So if I have to kind of uh, give a picture of, you know, uh, I mean, roughly, right, this is not accurate, but if you have to see what is the percentage of contribution when we are running in terms of force, the, the hip muscles, that is the, the glute muscles alone plus the hip flexors, contribute anywhere between 40% to 50% of the force that is generated. So you understand how important they are. And rest of it is coming from, you know, your uh, quadriceps and hamstrings. That would be another 30%, right? And then the lower muscles like calf muscles, ankle muscles, they produce the remaining 20%, all those minor muscles, right? So we are talking about majority of the force production that we require to run better, run faster, run longer is coming from the hips. So this is, these are the two important parts of, you know, what is happening when it comes to hip. And the third part, which kind of related to the first part, the center of gravity is our ability to transfer the energy from the upper body to the lower body uh, happens through the hip. Hip is like a junction, right? If you really look at it. And if the junction is efficient, the transmission of energy happens in a much more smoother way, right? Um, and hip also acts as a way to store the energy. Like say, whenever we land, we are taking the shock. Basically, that means hip is absorbing that energy, right? So along with other muscles that we have. And hip is a major part of shock absorption. Now, that energy, where will that go? It will again come back, right? So hip is actually acting as an energy transfer mechanism in that sense as well. So it is transferring the energy between upper body and lower body and coordinating all that. And more importantly, it is taking the energy, storing it and releasing it, right? So, so in all the three ways, hip plays a very, very important role in our running. Yeah. So we are talking a lot about hips. And I don't know if Shakira knew when she, was, when she actually choreographed the song, Hips Don't Lie. I think somewhere she knew that we are going to talk and we are going to pick on her. So, um, so hips, uh, as we are talking, right, they are one of the most critical component of running better, 
right and when i say running better none of the other aspects say the upper body or the lower body can be taken into isolation as you as you mentioned about ankle injury or knee right so how does it play such a crucial role in running and i would like to like you to touch base up, uh, upon say hip flexion pelvic rotation and a little more technicality so from hip mechanics point of view um there are a couple of important things um maybe three important things the first one is hip flexes as in hip bends and then hip extends and uh, uh, so just a quick um, intro to running gait right so in running gait we have three major phases uh, first one is initial contact when we touch the ground then we stabilize ourselves that is called mid stance where we stabilize ourselves and we bend the hips and all that and then third is the um, push up where we take up from the ground and then we move right now um, hips play very important role in all these three right so as i said in the initial contact as you touch the ground and as you go into the mid stance uh, hips flexes flexes as in it bends and that is the way hip actually uh, takes the ground shock and then it helps in absorbing all that shock so that is called hip flexion and then the next step is uh, we extend the hip that is where hips actually generate the force they contract and then they generate force in a very short time and which is actually what propels us forward right now while that is happening on one leg the other leg which is swinging right in the air uh, so as you take off from the ground the the leg which is on the ground which actually is taking off which means it is going backwards that is where the hip is extending and then the other leg which is swinging that goes forward right so there also what is happening is the hip is flexing right so you are basically driving the knee upwards so hip flexors are action in again right so when you are landing hip flexors are in action when you are taking off hip extensors are in action and then as you take off on the other side again hip flexors are in action right so hip flexion hip extension this is the foundation of you know what happens in hip mechanics right um and the other important thing uh, apart from hip extension and hip flexion is hip abduction and hip adduction right so um see uh, we are we use uh, feet to move forward right and we don't have wheels that means that our feet has to create some kind of a rotation for us to move forward right so whenever we are going into initial contact to mid stance what happens is that one foot goes slightly on to the lateral side as in for example your right foot goes towards the right and left foot when it lands it goes towards the left right so we are creating some kind of a uh, lateral movement little bit of lateral movement which helps us to kind of go forward and if the uh, hip muscles are weak or if they are not able to stabilize this motion then what will happen is that there will be a lot of free lateral movement like side to side movement like if you seen lot of runners you would have seen especially um beginners right later in stages of the race you would see they move a lot of left and right you will see that you know they're bending onto one side or the other side and that is happening because their hip abductors are weak right so abductors are the muscles which basically helps you to stabilize that movement so hip abduction adduction is the opposite side of the movement which is basically bringing the foot back so for example uh, when you are extending the foot um at the same time the other foot is actually swinging forward and at that time it is trying to bring the step back in and if you are not able to do a strong adduction what will happen is that uh, your foot will turn out you would have seen like many runners have uh, duck feet where the foot turns out right so so that is hip abduction and adduction sure so you spoke a lot about um about adductors abduction about rotation and uh, even at run mechanics when we are uh, when we are analyzing runners um, some of them come with various injuries so it could be a knee injury or a foot injury and then they take these injuries in isolation right but sometimes um, these injuries don't stem from where it it is injured but further up right and this is generally stemming from as you mentioned a weaker adductor or a pelvic drop so uh, can you tell me some of the common causes uh, that that actually stems from a poor hip mechanic 
So in most cases, um, going back to our earlier answer, which is the uh, strength of the hips, which is coming from the glutes primarily. And uh, many runners, 90% of the runners we see, all right, um, have what we call glute inhibition, as in they're not using their glutes effectively, as in they're using glutes. Of course, everybody uses glutes. But how well you are using when you're running is very important, right? How strongly you are using. Now, if you have inhibited glutes, what will happen is that we would have all kind of, you know, compensations because of that, right? You would use uh, hamstrings more, we will use calves more, uh, we will try to, you know, overcompensate by increased cadence, uh, we will do overstriding, right? V variety of things that we do to compensate for inhibited glutes. So that is a common cause we see the reason why poor hip mechanics, right? So we can probably go into the detail as in how it manifests and you know what all the things that one can do to identify and test and then see what can be done, right? And the other uh, common cause is um, again related to strength is the weakness of the hip flexors. Hip flexors are the muscles that are there in front of the hip, which will allow you to raise the knee, right? So when you are swinging your leg forward you basically raise the knee. And if you have a weak hip flexors, that means that your hip flexion is very low. And what will happen because of that is that uh, you wouldn't be able to lift the knee high enough to get a good stride. And that would mean that you will have a weak stride. And it would also mean that to compensate, uh, the runner might uh, overstride or runner might just land straight on the knees. So one of the common issues that we see many runners, especially beginners do is that they land straight on the knee, right? That there is no bend when they're landing, which is a very bad thing for the knees, by the way, right? So, uh, so that is the second uh, major issue that um, we see. Um, and third, which is uh, also about mobility, right? So this is a common issue. If people have say tight hip flexors or general hip mobility is low, then what will happen is that because of that, if you have not enough mobility, uh, I mean, if you have too much flexibility, that is also not good. If you have too much tightness, that is also not good. That means you are not able to control the movement, right? So uh, any hip mobility issues will seep into poor mechanics of the hip. You will have either side to side movement, uh, you will have um, uh, very restricted uh, hip extension, many such uh, you know pop problems that will be there which will again lead to compensations and uh, one other thing which is also equally important is the instability which is related to earlier i mentioned about adductors and abductors right so if you have uh, weak uh, weak adductors and abductors that can cause a lot of instability when you at your at your mid stance which will which can actually go further down right a lot of times if you have weak hip abductors, uh, what will happen is that that will translate to collapsed knees, that will translate to collapsed foot, that is O-pronation and so on and so forth, right? So, so these are the uh, uh, common causes. So Arvind, you spoke about the causes and uh, now I want to take a step further. So if a, a runner is um, at any stage of uh, their running journey, I would like them to understand as to what is it what kind of injuries manifest through this causes? So, um, injuries I think probably we'll talk later, but I think the first thing is to understand how do you know you have poor me hip mechanics, right? So there are certain things that probably uh, you can really see in your running which will help you to understand where you stand. Ideally, what you have to do is that you have to do a video test, right? Somebody looking at you running, some expert, uh, please come to Run Mechanics. We are more than happy if you come. Um, so they can see and then they know what is happening. But what we will do now is that we kind of explain what are the common you know, um, uh, issues that manifest or you know, things that you can see when you are running. Right? The first and foremost uh, that uh, we normally see, which basically um, can be very much visible, is the weep... Um, like hip extension is what I was earlier explaining, right? When you push off, the foot goes back, right? And um, the runners who has uh, glute inhibition, and that is very common that they have weak hip extension as well. So weak hip extension is essentially not pushing the hip back enough, right? So 
so it's like a hip is like a bow and arrow right so if you extend the bow as uh, you know back as possible then the arrow goes forward which equals force right so it is important in running as well right so the hip acts like there uh, in the same way as how a bow and arrow would act so a good hip extension a bad hip extension very easy to identify when you look at visually right the second visible sign when you see runners you know um, is the what we call technical term is contralateral pelvic drop um, but uh, it is visually you can see in race photos right so especially towards the end towards the finish line you would see uh, you know uh, one side of the hip is like very bent i mean as in it's drop and uh, probably you would have tilted onto one side right and it's very common because um, we do fatigue a lot and uh, towards the end you know the hip abductors and adductors that i talked about earlier which are responsible for controlling the lateral motion they do get fatigue and then you see this drop significant drop at the time visibly significant but that said uh, the drop um, can be seen even in the beginning of the run uh, which probably not very much visible to the eye but uh, that is very important that you understand how much of the drop because this is a common indicator of variety of injuries including it band syndrome and pfps so most of these uh, knee injuries are because of the contralateral pelvic drop and um, the other one we just discussed earlier was the um, uh, weak hip flexors that would cause uh, a very weak hip flexion as in you are not able to raise the knee much and that is a very common issue that you can see visibly uh, a while running which can uh, say that you know they have poor hip mechanics and the one other thing is uh, the the rotation that i earlier talked about which is the pelvic rotation and uh, uh, for example the if you have uh, say a weak control on the pelvic rotation what can it can do is that it can cause the foot to toe out right so basically the foot goes outwards so which is essentially in other words means that you're not able to rotate the pelvic internally as in towards inside right so that is also a very common thing that uh, you can see in running so arvin i heard you talking about certain injuries right but i would like you to give us a whole host of uh, injuries if we have uh, weak hip mechanics see uh, this is a bold thing to say but um, i would say almost all injuries that runners have comes from poor hip mechanics right so you can kind of correlate most of the injuries back to the poor hip mechanics um actually a uh, physio good physio friend of mine uh keep saying this as in poor hips means lot of injuries right and uh, it's a vicious cycle right so um so um i think we kind of covered those uh, key aspects of you know the issues that we talked about right say contralateral pelvic drop which can cause it band syndrome or pfps right that's very common and then um, lack of mobility hip mobility can cause um, variety of other issues like say si joint uh, you know issues um lack of mobility can cause um, uh, very tight hips can cause uh, many downward problems because it will it will it will basically you'll start compensating by overstriding and all so they are not necessarily related because of the uh, poor hips in the sense of strength but these are basically derived from poor hip mechanics right so if you have poor hip mechanics say uh, are not able to have a good stride because of the poor hip mechanics you start overstriding which can cause again knee injuries so so directly or indirectly many of the injuries that happen you know are related to poor hip mechanics so even things like plantar fasciitis uh, which you might think that you know they have nothing to do with um, you know hips but most likely the reason for that is somewhere upwards you know poor hip mechanics uh, so most of the times we tend to look at the shoes and you know many other things but um, poor hip mechanics would be the cause of 90% of the injuries i would say at atlas they don't claim to make you a faster or a better runner runners who use atlas distance shots though tell they are able to enjoy and focus on what matters the most and that is the run thanks to their choice of a quick drying and light weight fabric econel this is a recycled ocean waste nylon and a pocket design 
that lets them store essentials like phone, keys, and energy gels for a long distance run. Short or long, fast or slow, roads or trails, you should love your run. At Atlas, they design the distance running shorts and products with this goal. Visit www.goatlas.com to check out distance running shorts and other products. So now we've spoken a lot about poor hip mechanics and it's established that it is the holy grail of improving our run and improving our performance. So let's talk about building better hip mechanics, right? So can you can you talk about how should we build better hip mechanics? So um, building better hip mechanics, um, I would put it into um, maybe four different aspects, right? One is strength and power. Uh, strength is actually, actually about building stronger muscles, uh, which are basically hips and the musculature around the hips, right? That would include quadriceps, hamstrings, all of that, glutes and all of that. Um, that is the st strength and power. And the second is mobility. And mobility is also very important because if you don't have a good mobility, ability to control your motion, ability to extend as you need, that would also make you a weaker one. So you need to bring in strong mobility. The third is stability and balance, right? So that is also equally important, right? And stability and balance is how I think we, we talked a lot about center of gravity and all that. So you kind of now know why it is important. So, and then the last, which is very important, is the technique and uh, ability to understand how you're moving, right? So these are the four, I would say, as the framework in how you would build better hip mechanics. And this is not just for hip mechanics. If you're talking about knee mechanics, the same four uh, would apply. So I would say that this is a framework for building better mechanics in general, right? So, so, strength, and, uh, so uh, strength and power, uh, balance and stability, mobility, and uh, technique. So, um, Arvind, there is strength and then there is power. So, there are two different things, right? So, we have to transfer our strength into power while we are running. Can you explain as to how this can be done and if you can uh, cursory tell us about some of the drills that we can do in trans transfer transferring our strength into power? So, one of the first things to do is that uh, coming out of uh, glute inhibition and the best way to do is what we call glute bridges and it is a very foundational moment and there are variations of glute bridges uh, which are basically single leg and then you can add some more dynamism to it by adding a Swiss ball and so on and so forth and bridges are the foundational. And second one is squats. Uh, squats is a, an excellent workout to build the strength uh, of the glutes. Um, so again, there are variations of squats, you know, you can have weighted squats, single leg squats, and then you can add more dynamic elements to squats as well. Um, and then there are split squats, like you're doing squat on one side, elevating the foot on the other side, and so on and so forth. Um, the third is the lunges. So, um, so if I have to summarize them, bridges, squats, and lunges, right? So these are the three foundational moments which will help you to uh, make your glute stronger. Now, the question you asked is about the power, right? So all these three are good to build the strength, but there is no use if you cannot convert that into power, right? So the way to do that is what we call thrusters. And the thrusters bring that element of converting strength into power. In fact, there is an interesting study. What they have done is that they looked at uh, all these various workouts and then saw what is the muscle activity like, which exercise is creating most muscle activity. That means that most effective for you to build strength, right? Strength and power, right? So obvious one in that is the, um, the hip thrusters. Right? So hip thrusters is the most effective among these. Um, so so, so, and then apart from the, um, the thrusters, there are quite a few that one should look at for power generation, especially, uh, see, one is uh, generating power is fine, but you also convert that power into your running, right? So, 
how do we translate that how do we transfer the power and strength that you have into your running that's where the drills come in place plyometric drills are an excellent way to you know uh, create that kind of a transfer from your strength and power into your running so now that we've spoken about glutes um i want to talk about mobility and strength especially for the flexors hip flexors here and we've seen that a tight hip flexor can uh, make it can break our running right because it uh, limits our extension and then there is a, a limitation in the pelvis so there is a a hip bend and uh, i want to ask you that how can we improve the strength of our flexors right so <clears throat> the two parts to that question right the first one is the um, hip flexor how do we ensure the tight hip flexors we can come out of it uh, that is by increasing the mobility of the hip flexors and uh, most of us sit all through the day so hip is always flexed so over time it gets tighter because of that the flexors get tighter now how do you come out of that um the variety of things that you can do um the most foundational one is uh, kneeling uh, hip flexor stretch basically you go into a lung, lunge position and then you stretch the hip flexor and then there are quite a few asanas that uh, one can do uh, vajrasana and so on and so forth which can also help with uh, stretching the hip flexors right couch stretch is another important one which can help with uh, stretching the hip flexors so this is the release in the hip flexors uh, which are super useful for all runners and i would suggest that um, without testing itself i would assume that most runners 99% of the runners will have tight hip flexors so do work on these uh, hip flexor stretches now now coming to the strength of the hip flexors and um, and these are something that anyone can do uh, at home you know within within the uh, premises of you know what is available to them you don't need to go to any specialist per se and what are these uh, workouts that you can do um things like step ups so basically go near a step and then go, go up and down go up and down right so repeat it many a times on both sides with each leg uh knee raises right just raising the knee up and then bringing it down and then you can add uh, elastic bands so that you get resistance so that you can raise the knee up with some resistance and then bring it down right uh high knees um basically this is a little bit more dynamic a kind of plyometric but still slightly lean forward and then start doing high knees either in place or you can actually move forward uh, as you go along right so all these three will help you to um you know get better hip flexion uh, build stronger hip flexors and then you can make it a little bit more complicated as in like you, what you can do is that you can put some weights around your feet when you're doing knee raises and so on and so forth so you can add some more complexity but more or less uh, these will uh, help you to uh, get stronger hip flexors so arvin now i want to talk about stability right and stability comes by our adductors and abductors right i want to ask you how can we improve our stability and what role do they play in our running this is a very important question and i would say uh, as i said earlier i was referring to pelvic drop is one of the common issues that we saw and uh, weak hip abductors are the reason weak hip abductors uh, which means that the gluteus medius the outside muscles of the glutes which are weak so building them and this is not something that uh, most runners don't do i mean see uh, the problem that i see is that runners when they do strength training they are not specific right so they just generally do some strength training oh okay is one more check box but unfortunately that is not very helpful right so while general strength will help but specific strength is equally important if not you know uh, it is the key right um so hip abductor strength is uh, the key and what will make you better uh, build uh, better uh, hip abductors um these are uh, probably not something that we do uh, see something like lateral step ups right so earlier we talked about forward step ups lateral step ups are basically you are raising a step on the side right again you can add weights so to make it more challenging right and then the another uh, exercise that you can do is called a hip drop hip hitch basically you stand on a one leg and then you drop your hip and then again raise your hip upwards so basically again you are kind of training 
the hip abductors to uh, how to engage themselves right so that's very important um you can also do many of the unilateral glute workouts basically uh putting weight on one side of the hip on one leg right like say lunges walking lunges but carrying like say heavier dumbbell or a kettlebell on one side of the body with one hand so that means that you are kind of putting more stress on one side means means that you are actually stressing the outer side of the glute right so those are super helpful as well right so um and uh, what else probably suitcase deadlifts right so anything that uh, you can think which will put the uh, stress on the outside of the glutes will help you to build strong hip abductors now abductors are the outside part but adductors which are the uh, the muscles that are inside are in, inside your thighs right inner thighs and uh, i think earlier we talked about kind of why the duck feet or toe out happens and the weak hip abductors are the reason and that can cause significant instability in your running so Uh, how do you build strong hip adductors um again uh, what you can do is um, uh, one basically is called uh, using bands um, bands are i think super useful for every runner and every runner should have the bands with them all the time right so no matter where they are just like a uh, foam roller foam roller and bands like they are part of uh, everybody runners every runner's life all right um so what they can do is that use bands and then tie the band to the feet and then try to pull the leg inwards right towards your body right so that basically stresses your inner thighs uh the another interesting workout could be what we call copenhagen plank um i think it is hard to explain in here but i think a visual will help so copenhagen plank is extremely effective in uh, building um, um uh, strong inner thighs or hip adductors sumo squats where you uh, you know widen your stance when you're squatting that will again help you to build strong hip adductors yeah i think these kind of summarizes uh, the hip abductors and adductors the strength of each and then you can make them a little bit more dynamic by adding variations so arvind you've spoken a lot about hips right and uh, be it uh, stability be it mobility be it strength power generation and this is my last question to you so i want to ask you what would be one take away that you would want to tell to our listeners okay very um tough question because one take away if i have to say uh, it may not be hip but it might be generally for every runner i think we runners look for the holy grail always right the next best thing right so we have this fear of missing out so new shoes you know this new fancy workout new fancy gym right so we constantly keep uh, going behind these things but i think based on what you have we just discussed i think this is all about fundamentals and having a strong foundation and a strong consistent you know uh, way to ensure that you know you are training effectively right so so i would say that you know be grounded look at the fundamentals like building strong hips all right um having better mobility so i would say don't uh, always look at the next best thing but work on the foundation that will make you a better runner as opposed to going into that vicious cycle of you know run injure rehab run injure rehab right so so i i would uh, urge all our listeners to know more about their running understand their hip mechanics and then work towards better hip mechanics better knee mechanics that will help them make better runners thank you arvind and thank you for once coming outside of behind the scenes and being in front of the in front of the video and in front of everyone right now so all the best i know you are training for your next marathon i wish you all the success and a non injured training cycle thank you so much aditi I would like to thank all of those who are listening or viewing to today's episode. If you have any suggestions regarding the topic or content you would like us to cover, please share us by emailing us at connect@geeksonfeet.com. I would like to thank my friend Arvind for post production, 
editing, sound recording, and everything behind the scenes. We generate a lot of technical content for those seeking for technical running assistance. This will be available in the show notes. You can reach us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook. And also follow us on any of these social media channels.